you, we give you praise, we give you glory. Once again in this service, we ask that you move down every row and every aisle. We ask that you touch, heal, deliver. Whatever is wrong, make it right. Breathe upon everyone in this service tonight. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said they believe in amen. amen. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus this evening. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, welcome to Wine Press Day 3. Welcome to Wine Press Day 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please permit me to go straight into God's word. Uh, we have, you know, very limited time constraints. I want to welcome everybody tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're in the overflow, if you're in this auditorium, if you're watching us online, we're welcoming you powerfully to this service. This evening, we say God bless you. Everywhere you, anywhere you are, we pray that the grace of God that is present here, all right, will rest upon you mightily in the name of Jesus. Pastor Nathaniel Bassi, thank you very much for being here tonight. We appreciate you. Glory to God. All right, glory to God. Tonight, I want to charge our hearts very briefly, and if we have some time, we will pray. And I want to talk about securing the help of God, securing the intervention of God in your business, in your finance, in your career, and any other thing that you are trusting God for, all right? Now, the first thing I want to say to you is this. I hope you can listen fast, glory to God, because if you can listen fast, you will hear fast and uh, things will work. Glory to Jesus. All right, now, the first thing I want to say to you tonight is that the fact that God or anyone for that matter has the ability to do something does not automatically confer that ability to you what that means is this the fact that somebody has money does not mean the person will give you that money how many of you know what i'm talking about as a matter of fact sometimes you hear people say things like okay if your pastor is that powerful if your pastor is that powerful why doesn't he just go to where all the sick people are and start healing them i want to ask you a question if dangote has so much money why doesn't he just go on the road and start dashing people Glory to God. Why? Because the fact that you have it is not proof that you are going to give it to everybody. Does it make sense to you? In other words, the only reason why somebody will give you something that they have is because they have made a commitment to you. Am I here this evening? Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. The Bible says that blessed is she that does what? Believes. For there shall be what? A performance of what? Those things that were said unto what? Ha from the Lord. So there is not a performance of everything. There, are perf there is a performance of the things that are said to what? Ha. Come on church. Are you with me tonight? Glory to Jesus. And so when you look at life and you look at the fact that I may have an organization where I hire 10,000 people. But until I make a commitment to you that I am going to give you a job, you cannot say that you are believing me for a job. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right? Until you make a commitment. Sometimes you are driving on the road and you see people come to beg you for money. Somebody comes to beg you for a hundred naira and you don't give them. But you give your girlfriend a hundred thousand to buy Brazilian hair. Why do you do that? Because you are committed to one. You are not committed to another. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And so what that means is this. Once you can get the commitment of God, the, the responsibility for fulfilling that word no more lies on you alone. It lies on God and you have a part to play. Are you following me tonight? And so what I'm trying to tell you tonight is that if you understand this and you understand the fact that all through scripture, every time God wants to do anything for anybody, the first thing he does is that he sends his word. Pastor Balaji showed us a very powerful scripture yesterday. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. The Bible says God does nothing until he first of all says it to his servant, right? Psalm 107 verse 20. The Bible says that he sent his word and his word did what? Come on church. And his word did what? Healed. But it did not only heal them, it did what? It delivered them from their destruction. So when God wants to deliver you, when God wants to do something, what he does is that he sends his word. Look at Abraham. Get thee out of your father's land. I will do this for you. I will do that for you. It was on the basis of that that Abraham moved. Look at Isaac. He said to him, so in that same land. And the Bible says, no, God said, don't go anywhere. He sowed in that land and in that same year, he reaped what? A hundredfold. Look at Jacob. God gave him a word. Isaac prophesied a word into his life and his life turned around look at david right david was anointed king before he went there are you following me look at joshua god told him i will be with you you will be courageous you will be this you will be that 
every time God blesses people, a word goes forth first. God looked at Gideon and said, before you are going to go out, uh, you are going to go in your strength and gives him a word. Every time God blesses people, the first thing he does is that he sends his word. He gets to Mary, right? And listen, this it blows my mind every single time. He gets to Mary and says, listen, you will have a son. You will do this. You will do that. And he performs his word. He gets to Paul. Paul is in a shipwreck. The Bible says an angel came and gave him a word. And, and that was what happened. He gets to Peter. Peter said, if it is you, bid me to come on the water. And Jesus said, come. So Peter did not walk on water. Peter walked on the word. Because if you walk on water, when you get to your bathroom tonight, put, tap, put water in the bathroom and start walking. Why? God is not a respecter of person. Well, you do also want, I mean, maybe you too can, okay, go and walk. What am I trying to tell you tonight, right? That, listen, God will send you a word, and then on the, back, on the back of that word, it will ensure that there is a fulfillment of the things that he has said to you. How do I know this? Isaiah chapter 46, verse 11. Isaiah 46, 11. Glory to Jesus. If you are with me, can you say Amen. The Bible says, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will who? Who will bring it to pass? Come on, church. Who spoke it? Who is bringing it to pass? I, I have what? Proposed it. And who will do it? Listen to me, church. Do you see yourself in that scripture? So calm down. Some of you keep working like as if you are the one going to make the miracle happen. Listen, that once you get a word from God, right? Listen, you've entered a place of rest. Why? Because God is committed to the performance of his word as long as you follow instructions. I want to ask you a question. How did Abraham get money? How did Abraham become wealthy? The way Abraham became wealthy when they called him out of all of the Chaldeans, right? Is that the Bible says that he left the Negev and went down to Egypt. He told them that Rebecca, what was the name of his wife? Sarah. He said Sarah was his sister, right? Not his wife, am I right? So in the process of fulfilling the word, Abraham lied. Okay, so, <laughs> some of you are looking at me. Okay, so, so, so what happened? The Bible says when they got there, when he said that, everybody started favoring him. They started giving him money. I want to ask you a question. One king is interested in your wife, but everybody is giving you money. God only needs an excuse to bless you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It can be anything. It can be the string of David. It can be whatever it is. It can be a beautiful wife. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? We don't dictate the method. All our job is, is to get a word from him. And he is committed. He says, I watch over my word to ensure that it comes to pass. He says, none of these words will do what? Fall to the ground. Why am I saying this to you, right? That in your journey of life, when you come to a place like Wine Press and you come to a place like Encounter, one of the things that you must be attentive for is God speak a word. Why? Because if he speaks a word, you're done. You can take it to the bank. You can go anywhere you want to. Because the God that spoke the word will watch over his word until it comes to pass. Has he spoken a word about your finances? Has he spoken a word about your business? Listen, child of God, what you need to do is to hold on to that word. Why? Because he watches over his word. He says, I will perform it. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So when you look at, when you get home, just go and read it in your Bible. Genesis 12, 13. How did Abraham get wealthy? How did Isaac get wealthy? How did Jacob get wealthy? Why? Because there was a covenant Oh my Jesus. Because there was a covenant with them, the Bible says that God had to just make things work. Glory to Jesus. And let me tell you something here. Eh? In case you think that you have to be perfect to see a manifestation, I'm here to tell you that the God that made you knows that you are not perfect. Listen, child of God, Abraham lied. Hello? Are we going to act like it did not happen? Isaac lied. He said, it's my wife. It's my sister. Praise the Lord. Jacob cheated. Glory to God. Okay, leave all of them. David. Jesus. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. David did what? David did not lay cheats. He was a fornicator. He was a murderer. But yet, the throne of God did not leave the household of David. 
Listen, I, I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight, uh, but God is looking beyond your mistakes. God is looking beyond your errors uh, and taking you from a place of works uh, into a place of grace. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Listen, are we going to act like Bathsheba was a legitimate wife? Are we going to act like Solomon was legit? So God did not find any other womb. Hey, Akabasha. But the womb of somebody that was not supposed to be in the picture. I have a feeling God is writing somebody into the story of a future that they never thought would happen. God is grafting you into a lineage. God is grafting you into a family where the things that were bringing you shame, he's about to turn it around. Somebody say amen. He chooses the weak things of this world to confound the wise. So what am I trying to tell you? You don't have to be perfect. All you have to do is hold on to God's word. God is able to do just what he said. Because if you were the one that said it, then you have to do it. But when he says it, that's why we say all you need is a word from God. Because one word from God changes everything. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. Listen, and that's why when you read your Bible, God has literally just one condition. Psalm, 80, Psalm 85 verse 8. Psalm 85 verse 8. Listen, God says, listen, I will hear what God, the Lord will speak for. He will speak peace unto his servants and to his saints. But he said, let them not do what? Return again to folly. So in other words, when you are on track and you are working the word as much as you can, do not start believing in your environment. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Jonah chapter 2 verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. The reason many people's journeys in the Christian faith is aborted is not because God stopped being faithful. It's because they stopped believing. I want to encourage you to do something this year. Probably you've never done it before. Whatever word God has given you, and if he hasn't given you a word tonight, you will receive one before you leave this place. I said you will receive one before you leave this place. Listen, whatever that word is, hold on to it. Stop worrying about how it will work. You just keep working the word. Are you following me? Why? Because sometimes, listen there, eh, you know, what's the difference between planting and burying? The Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a seed into what? The ground. It looks like you are burying the seed, but you are not burying it. You are actually planting it. So when the enemy thinks he's messing you up and he's trying to bury you, he's not burying you, he's planting you. Because if he knew who you really were, he would know that you are going to grow in 60-fold, in 30-fold, uh, and in 100-fold. Uh, somebody say amen. amen. So tell your neighbor, you are not being buried. You are being planted. I don't know what the challenge may be. I don't know what the situation is. But look at somebody else with the fire of God in your eyes uh, and tell him you are not being buried. You are being planted. So I have just two things to tell you tonight. Two things. Number one, get the word. Tap your neighbor, tell him, get the word. How do you get the word? Tonight, listen, as Pastor Balaji begins to preach, as it begins to, as we worship, come on, worship with us. Some of the biggest word for my life that I have received were in the place of worship. The word had not even come. I was blessed already. I could go home from there. I don't know if you understand. So the word was like, Jara, are you following me? Listen, as the word of God comes to you, the question is this, which one has God ah, designed for me? Why? When you get your bespoke word, it will make bespoke sense. It will make sense in a way that only you can understand. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Have you ever gotten a miracle from a scripture that did not look like your miracle? I don't know what you want. Why? Because God knows how to make what does not look like sense make sense. Because he specializes in using the foolish things to do what? So tonight, get a word. Listen, maybe your prayer should be, Lord, I'm not living here until you speak a word to my heart that gives me peace. When, Jacob, when Joseph came to meet Pharaoh and Pharaoh was asking him about dream, he said, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. The word of God that comes into your heart that gives you peace, that is your word tonight. The second thing is this. Whether you happen to life or life happens to you, hold on to the word. Are you listening to me? The last scripture, Romans chapter 8, New Living Translation from verse 35. 
Romans chapter 8 from verse 35. Last scripture and I'm done. 35 to 37. The Bible says, can everything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if you have trouble? So in, in the course of 2023, you may see trouble. But guess what? He does not mean he no longer loves you. Does it mean he no longer loves you if we see, if we are persecuted? They may be harassing you in the office, but that does not take away the love of God. Are you with me? You may be trusting for the funding that it may not yet have happened, but that doesn't mean that God didn't speak a word. He says, does it mean he no longer loves us if we are hungry? Meaning that you don't know where the next meal will come from, but it does not mean that God has stopped loving you. If you are destitute or in danger or threatened with death, please jump to verse 37. Verse 37, verse 37. He says, no, despite all these things, how many overwhelming victims uh, do we have in the house tonight? Uh, he says, despite all these things, uh, we are what? Overwhelming victory. Uh, you are not just going to be victorious. Uh, you are going to be victorious in a way uh, that when others hear your testimony, they will laugh with you. Uh, people will look at you and read the Bible. Uh, people will look at you and pray. Uh, why? Because overwhelming victory. Uh, tap somebody say overwhelming victory. Not small victory, not one victory, not two victories. Overwhelming. Overwhelming means it has taken over. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Overwhelming victory is your portion. If you believe that tonight, say amen. Overwhelming victory is mine. In 2023, I will laugh. In 2023, I will do exceeding exploits. In 2023, I will experience overwhelming victory. Anywhere you are, lift your hands. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The power of the Lord is in this place. Somebody declare victory is mine in Christ Jesus. Come on, go ahead and make that a prayer for two seconds. And we're going to give an opportunity to some amazing people in this place. Oh, in the Namakura Basha. Paul said to Timothy, he says, use these words to wage a good warfare. And that's what you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name. Listen, church, the reality is this. Everything we've talked about, everything I have shared tonight is something that God has reserved for them that love him and for them that have a relationship with him. And that is why tonight I want to make a call. If you are here in this auditorium, you don't know Jesus. God is not the Lord of your life. If you die now, you're not sure you'll make heaven and you know that your relationship with him is not just right. I want us to do something together. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. If you're in this auditorium tonight, you don't know Jesus. God is not the Lord of your life. Anywhere you are, wherever you are seated, all eyes are closed, all heads are bowed because we want to respect your decision. I want, you to, I want to ask you to please raise your right hand slightly above your head. I want to pray with you tonight. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Thank you for doing that. All over this auditorium, people are raising their hands. In the overflow, I see some people there as well raising their hands. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. Whether you are online or you are on site, you are watching anywhere you are, anywhere you are watching from. Listen tonight, the presence of God is in this place and the power of God wants to catapult you from where you are to where you ought to be. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you worship. We give you praise. We give you worship. We give you praise. We give you worship. We give you praise. If you are here and you're making that decision, you want to say, pastor, you know what? Just pray with me. My relationship with Jesus is not right. Something has broken down along the way. I want to ask you that you just pray with me. Anywhere you are, if your right hands are, are lifted above your head, the ushers want to put a card in your hands. Once you get that card, please put your right hand on your chest. I want you to say a prayer with me. Once you get that card, please put your hands on your chest. I want you to say a prayer with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For everyone that have their hands on their chest, please say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to know you. I believe in my heart that you died for me. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. Today, I am born again. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Thank you, my God. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. 
And everybody said, I believe in amen.